Hey everyone, it's Ashley, and today I am bringing you my spoilery review for Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Um, I am actually so, 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 so excited about filming this video. I cannot wait to have some discussions with all of you that have already read this book, and I can't wait to share all of my emotions and feelings and thoughts about this book with all of you guys. However, before I get started, just to be clear, if you have not read this book, I would feel so terrible if you kept watching this video. I'm going to spoil a lot of things. I'm going to be talking about in-depth parts of the book. I'm going to be discussing elements that would spoil a lot of it for you. And honestly, I love this book so, so, so much that if you haven't read it, please do not watch the rest of this video. I did a non-spoilery review, which I will leave linked down below for you guys. And once you have read it, then you can keep watching. If you have already read it, then let's get started talking about Name of the Wind. I am not going to keep holding this book up throughout this whole video because it's heavy and that would be way too much. So now we're just going to talk face to face without the book beside my face because it's, just, it's a big book, guys. Okay, so let's start with characters and character development and obviously let's start with Quoth. Um, like, what? I, I don't know that I've read a character this well developed and a character that I love this much in a very, 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 very long time. I found that he was spunky and sassy and clever. I know that some people have a problem with him because they think like, how can you be good at everything? Like, ah, oh, he's just such a trope, etc, etc. And I respect if that's how you feel about him, but I really didn't. I feel like when you read a book, you go into it knowing that there's going to be tropes. There's going to be elements of the story that you know, seem very similar because that's how stories work. Stories are always going to seem somewhat similar, it's just kind of how they function. And I feel like characters are the same way, like, he's a main character, you know? Like, Harry Potter is a good example to compare him to, like, Harry Potter was another one of those characters that people were always complaining, like, ah, oh, you know, like, he always has stuff handed to him, like, why is he good at everything, blah blah blah, chosen one, and it's like, his parents died! when he was a toddler, and he's being hunted by a crazy man with no nose. So like, I mean, it's, he's really not all that, you know, well off. And I feel like Kavoth is the same way. Like, shitty things happen to him all the freaking time. Like, he did not live a great life. Like, his parents were murdered, basically in front of him. Now he's trying to find these crazy, existent yet non-existent Chandrian, and get revenge, but he can't, and then he's homeless for a while, and then, like, he can never get this girl he loves to love him back, and it's like, his life is not a freaking cup of tea, okay? So, uh, I mean, to each their own, you can have your own opinion, but I just don't agree with those people who believe that he is too perfect of a character. I think that the reason that he's perfect for me, personally, is that he's not perfect. Like, that all these shitty things happen to him, but he still remains clever and intuitive and intelligent and... You know, maybe he's a little bit too narrow-minded in terms of his drive. Um, sometimes we'll get to this later on, like more of this later on, but sometimes, especially when it came to Denna, just narrow-minded cloth. Just so narrow-minded. Now we're gonna move on to some of the side characters. Bast. I loved Bast from the very beginning simply because his name was Bast. <laughs> And it reminded me of Bastion from The NeverEnding Story, and the minute that I saw his name, I was like, ah, I am officially in love with you because you have this awesome name. And then you find out more about Bast. Uh, you don't find out too, too much in this book. I'm really hoping you find out more in the next book. Please don't spoil that for me. Um, but, like, you find out that he's Fae, which seems super awesome. I didn't really clue in at the beginning when, like, he was gl basically glamouring himself to look like a person. I didn't quite clue in that he was Fey. I kind of just thought maybe he was like a shapeshifter of some kind. But by the end of the book, when you find out that he is Fey, I was just head over heels. Um, I know some friends who think that like they're su suspicious of him, especially because at the end of the book, like he tells Chronicler, like you must make him relive his good years and like make him love himself and be Kvoth again and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Like. I'm not all that suspicious of Bast. I think that he's just really protective of Quoth, and I don't think that's necessarily that bad of a thing, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens in book two, but as it stands right now, I am definitely on Team Bast. I am, however, a tiny bit suspicious of Chronicler. 
Um, I'm a little suspicious as to why he's there, what his motives really are for the story. Um, just, I'm just a tiny bit suspicious. I'm not quite, like, crazy, crazy suspicious, but, like, I'm, I'm a little weary. Okay, let's talk side characters in the actual chronicle of Kvoth's life, side characters. Uh, Abinthi, please come back. I was just starting to fall in love with you when you left us. Um, I'm really hoping he's not dead. I'm really hoping that he comes back in a later book. Um, I just, yeah, I'm really hoping he does. I'm hoping that he comes back in a later book. I'm also hoping Scarpy comes back in a later book. I want him to come back with all of his stories and his glory, and I think he might be a mender, member of the Emir. I think, I just, I really do, guys, because when he got taken away by the people in the church, one, one, he knew Kvoth's name without Kvoth telling him his name. That's weird to me. And it was one of those elements that you might not have caught if you weren't, like, super paying attention. But yeah, he called Kvoth Kvoth, and Kvoth never actually told him his name. Creepy, weird, a little off-center for me. Also, when he got taken away by the church, he told Kvoth, run, I have friends in the church, I'll be fine. But, like, the church members were pretty positive that they were gonna, like, get him. And then... Um, Chronicler says that he knew Scarpy and that he was with him for a while. Anyways, I think maybe he's a member of the Emir. Maybe. I think it's possible. It's just a theory. Just putting it out there. Next we will talk about Sim and Will or, uh, Simon and Willem or Sim and Will. Um, <laughs> I adore them as like schoolmate friends. I think they serve a purpose. I think they're adorable. I want more out of them in the future books. I don't know that I'm going to get that, but I want it. Um, I love, I have like a small tiny place inside my heart for Sim and his like adorableness. He is honestly so kind-hearted and I just, I love them both. They're pretty awesome. Love them. That's pretty much all I have to say. Before I talk about the awesome female characters in this book, I want to quickly talk about the teachers. Uh, specifically, Aladine. Um, <laughs> he is probably my favorite side character in the whole book series. No, that's a lie. But he's up there. Um, he, I just, I have such high hopes about what's going to happen with him in the second book that I really hope that all of those things come true because I, my hopes are just literally so high. He's so weird and obscure, but I feel like there's a reason for it. Like, you just gotta pay attention. And I feel like Foss just isn't quite getting it, but I feel like he's gonna learn so much from Eladin, and I just, I just, I can't wait. I love him so much. The whole time I was reading the book, I was just like, when is the next time I'm going to interact with Eladin? When is the next time this is gonna happen? I mean, when he let Foss fall off the roof, I just... He's funny, I like him a lot. My camera died. I am back to film the rest of this review. I am in a new outfit because it is a new day. Okay, where was I? I believe I was about to talk about Kilvin. So, Eladin is my favorite prof. I realize he's not in the book as often as some of the other ones. Kilvin, to me, is kind of like the McGonagall of this story. Like, he's there, and he's really important, and he's always there for Kvoth, like, always. But, like, he's not the most important of the professors, if that makes sense. But still very awesome. I do really, really like him. I feel like he has a bit more of a story to tell than what we've heard. Like, I think there's a reason that he took a liking to Kavoth, but I don't know what it is yet. So hopefully I find out. Maybe I'm just looking too hard into things. I don't know. As far as Lauren is concerned, I think that there's more going on than what we currently know. He seemed to like Kavoth at the beginning, and then he found out that Kvoth was looking into the Chandrian, and then all of a sudden he had no problem just, like, blaming him for things that, in all honesty, like, those teachers aren't stupid. They know what Ambrose is doing. Like, they have to know. Lauren has to know. So I feel like there's a little bit more going on there than what we know, so, you know. I'm curious. I'm weary of what's going on there. I realize that every story needs an antagonist, and I realize that Ambrose is necessary for this plot to develop and for all of these things to happen, and you know, he never would have found the name of the wind if Ambrose wasn't such a swear word. Um, but also I want to kill him. Not really, not literally. I don't want to kill anyone, that'd be mean. But like, I kind of want to like lock him in a prison. Or like, 
embarrass him in front of a lot of people. I don't, I just, I want something terrible to happen to Ambrose. I want, I just want him to get what's coming to him, you know? I want him to be expelled from the university. I want something to happen to him. And it's not gonna happen, because that'd be too perfect, and I know it's not gonna happen. But that's what I want. He drives me crazy. Um, yeah. And the main reason is, like, I realize every story needs a villain. Every story needs that villain. And I realize the Chandrian are the major villain, but, like, you know, Ambrose is the antagonist of the story. But, like, I mean, ah, just, gah. Okay, so that basically leaves us with his family and the girls. So I will quickly go over how I felt about his family and then move on to the awesomeness that is the female side characters in this book. Okay, so his family or his traveling family that maybe were not blood related but part of his family obviously matter but they're gone now so there's nothing else that can really happen with them aside from the fact that I go back and read over all those songs over and over and over and over again looking for plot clues because I feel like they're all so important. Um, I actually tabbed my book like blue tabs were favorite quotes and green was all of the plot elements that I thought would matter later so all of the songs all the stories that were told everything like that that I think will matter within the story I tabbed green the one thing that I do want to note is that his mom was a princess who left her kingdom and her family for Kvas dad but we never Ah, uh, I don't know. The only other thing I can think of is that she's from, like, the Feyland that we haven't seen at all, aside from the fact that Bast is from there, and I really just want to get there, and I feel like we're gonna get there in the second book, so anyways, just moving on. I'm curious and curious and curious about Cloth's mom and where she comes from and how that connects to the story. And it is finally time for us to talk about the awesome female characters in this story. Okay, so let's start with Denna. Uh, mainly because she's the first major female character that you come across. Oh, Denna. Okay, so when you first meet her, I understand the initial attraction. You know, Kvoth hasn't really been around females, he hasn't really had that crush factor. Totally get it. Uh, later on in the story, when she comes back and is around again, uh, which I knew the minute some girl started singing, I knew that it was gonna be her because, you know, God forbid. Um, but like I felt she was annoying because Kvoth's obsession with her was annoying but towards the end of the book I was like ah I don't dislike her that was my cell phone I don't dislike her I just disliked how Kvoth was acting around her she's actually really awesome she takes hold of her own life and make sure that she gets what she needs and what she wants. She goes out there and makes sure that she can live. She, yes, it's just naturally she travels a lot and naturally in order to maintain the lifestyle that she has to maintain in order to stay alive, she can be seen as not the best of women. But truthfully, if you look at it the right way, she's just a really awesome girl who makes sure that she gets what she needs and what she wants. Also, she's very clever. I found throughout the book as I was reading that like sometimes she would make comments towards Kvoth and I was like, oh my god, that was so clever. Like, she does have a high IQ, I think, and she's pretty smart. I was a little bit curious of her for a while. I'm still like a little skeptical of her motives towards everything, but I'm starting to be a little bit more on board with her and I realize that she's going to be a plot element for a very long time because Kvoth is basically obsessed with her, so I've gotten used to the idea of him being obsessed with her and we're moving on, I guess. But I do think that she's a really awesome character. I think that she is very in tune with what she needs and what she wants, and I think that that is a really, you know, developed female character, and I like her. I'm excited to see where she's headed. Okay, next let's move to Ari. Okay, I realize that Ari is a lot of people's favorite female characters. I realize that I'm not alone in this, but I just really like her. Um, I think she's weird. I love that she's weird. I think that she sees the world in a different way than everybody else does. And I almost think, especially in this particular story, that that is a really 
good thing. Like, I think that the way that she sees things and the way that she acts around things and how she functions as a person is going to end up being very important in future books. I'm really excited to see where she's going. She reminds me a lot of like, you know, like a really, really awesome pixie, if that makes sense. So, I don't know, is she fey? I hadn't thought about that until I just said pixie. It's possible. I feel like anything's possible in this series. I'm not saying that I necessarily absolutely am, you know, on, on track with that, that theory, but it's possible. I like her. I hope that she ends up being really important later. The last somewhat-ish main female character we're going to talk about is Devi. Uh, she is the badass female of the group. She is also very in tune with who she is and what she wants. She's totally kick-butt, and I think she has a huge crush on Kvothe, uh, which, you know, I just, I think all the female characters in this story are, they have their own thing, you know, like Denna is the singer-musician who is clever and witty, and Ari is like different and obscure and weird, but also really, really caring from what I can tell, and also like intuitive. I think that Ari is very intuitive and that's going to be very important later. And Devi is like the kick-butt badass female who is also very, 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 very smart and loves to read. Uh, the very, very smart bit I get from, like, the wanting his blood, and just, like, random things that she's said throughout the book. It just makes me think that she's really, really intelligent and that there's a lot more going on with her than what we currently know. I think that she's going to end up being really important in later novels. I am a little upset that when Quoth saved Fella from the fire, she went into straight up, like, I love you mode. I wasn't super pleased with that plot point, but we're gonna, we're just gonna move past it really quickly and give Patrick Rothfuss a little bit of a break because the rest of the female characters are pretty awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the world building and the setting in this novel. The world building is just so freaking good. Um, I, and we haven't even hit all of the elements of the world yet, I don't think, because we haven't hit any of the elements with the Fae. And I know they exist, so I know that they must have an element of the world that we haven't hit yet. So, like, the world building is only just starting in this series, and it's already so good. The way that Patrick Rothfuss explained different areas of the world, like the university and the different cities, like, he explained them to the point where I had vivid images in my head, but not so so much that I was like, ah, stop talking about the, how what that tree looks like, I just want to move on. Uh, he found a really good balance and I was really, really happy as a reader with that. Um, I feel like I could tell you right now like exactly where all the buildings in the university are inside my head and like where everything in the world is. Also there's an excellent map at the front of the book. It's just, I can't wait for it to keep going and I love it and I don't think I could ask more out of the world building and the setting. So, we're gonna move on really quickly. That was a really short one, considering characters probably lasted a really long time. Sorry. Next, we're gonna talk about the magic system and the epicness that is the magic system in this book. Uh, okay, so the magic system in this book is probably one of the best developed magic systems I've ever read. I really like that the author made you realize that literally anyone, literally anyone, could be magic if you have the mental ability to compartmentalize your brain. So, like, if you have the ability to separate your brain in certain ways and use the elements of your brain to connect yourself and other things to yourself and other things, then you can be magic. It's just like, it's like, that's science! I mean, I realize it's not real science because, like, I, I've tried. It doesn't work. I have tried to be magic, it just... You know, I was a kid who grew up with Harry Potter. You think I haven't tried to make things move with my brain? I obviously have. Uh, so, clearly, we don't live in a world like that. But the idea that instead of creating a world where you had to be born with magic blood or you had to have the ability to, you know, be magic, he created this world where literally anyone with a brain that functions at a high capacity could be magic. Because magic works because everything in the world is connected and it's just like... That's pretty much all I have to say about the magic system, is that it is like mind-blowing and amazing and I love the way that it functions and yeah. Next we are going to talk about plot. Okay, so the first thing I really want to say about the plot and the, the way that this story is structured and what it's about is that 
this story is a story within a story that is about stories. Like, what more could a reader ask for? What more could a person who loves stories ask for? Literally. Um, I really like how the author weaved in music, musical stories, literal stories, oral histories, etc. to create this giant plot of these evil villains that people believe are not real because they're, they believe they're just stories. But stories start from somewhere. Like stories don't exist out of the blue. There's, they came from somewhere. And then how like that really connects to everything that is connected to Kavoth and how like all these things, like literally everything in this book is connected. It's just, I love it so much. I like how the plot progressed. Um, the writing was so well done that even at the beginning when you were a little bit like, eh, this isn't quite what I was looking for when I picked this book up, you were like, ah, oh, but I still love it because it's so well written. Um, so I really, really liked that. I liked how it progressed. The flow of the novel was consistent. Um, I really liked that there was never really a part of the book that I was bored with. I was constantly wanting to read and how there's a lot of subplots going on. So there's the major, major plot, which is Kavoth is this giant hero. Why is he a hero? He wants to beat the Chandrian. Like, that is the epic, large plot. Who is Kavoth? How to get there? Chandrian. Large plot. Then you have the Kavoth and Denna plot. Then you have, like, what's going on with Elodin. I think Elodin might be Tabarlin the Great. I think he is Tabalin the Great, but I also think Tabalin the Great is just a story about people who have magical abilities. Like Kvoth could be Tabalin the Great. It's a story. Um, <laughs> I'm only somewhat excited, guys. Uh, so all these subplots are also going on at the same time, like Kvoth and Denna, Kvoth and Ari. What's going on with the university? Is Kvoth going to be able to stay in the university? What's going on with Ambrose? Also, the plot of what's happening in present day. So who is hunting Kvoth right now? Are they going to find him? And what's going to happen in the present day story of Kvoth or Coat or whatever you want to call him in present day tense. So when you add all those plot elements together, the plot of the story is not only intricate and well done, but it's super, super engrossing. The plot in this book is just epic. It's epic. It's magical. Now we'll move on to the writing. Uh, I don't really have much to say about the writing other than it was amazing. It was like a dream. It was so well written. There wasn't too much description. There wasn't too little description. There wasn't too much metaphor, but there definitely was quite a bit of metaphor. It felt so effortless. I'm sure it was not actually effortless. I'm sure that Patrick Rothfuss spent a lot of time working on this book, but I think it's really hard for authors to make their writing seem effortless. I'm sure it takes a lot of work to make it seem that way, but as a reader, when it feels like it's effortless, it just, the novel feels, it feels like a dream, and I haven't read very many books like that in my lifetime, so I cannot wait to read more by this author, and I really hope that he keeps writing for the rest of time, because the writing was just so good. Okay, just some random side theory things that I want to talk about. The ring that happens with Ari at the end of the book, I think that's going to be important. The ring that holds secrets, I think that that is going to be a important plot element later on, just saying. Also, Denna is always wearing this blue sapphire ring, and every time that he doesn't see her for a long time and then sees her, he mentions it. I think that that is going to end up also being important. Also, where did Denna grow up? She said that she got like a cold when she was younger and she has a bad immune system. So clearly she remembers her adolescence, but she clearly has no family now. So what happened to them? I also want to know why Denna keeps coming back to Amir. So Doach said that she kept coming back every few weeks before she even knew Kvath was there. So I'm wondering why she keeps coming back. Is there somebody else in Amir that she is close with or knows? I have a feeling she might know Devi. Uh, if not, there's a reason, and I just want to know what it is. Other than that, I just really want Abanthi to come back. I'm a little curious as to why he hasn't come back already. Like, he must have heard that Kavath's family got murdered, so you'd think that he would have tried to contact Kavath, but he hasn't, so I'm a little curious. 
Uh, so I really want Aventhea to come back. I really want to know more about Bast. I'm a little suspicious of Chronicler, but not too, too, too much. Um, and I want to know more about Ari. I'm so excited to read The Slow Regard of Silent Things, but I'm not going to read it until after I finish the second book because I've heard that it could potentially spoil things for the second book and I don't want that to happen. The thing that they found underneath that house at the end of the book, like the circle that had all those pictures on it and the descriptions, um, I'm a little curious about that. I mean, there's not too, too much to be curious about. I do think that, uh, oh, I forget his name now because they always just call him the head of the Chandrian. But anyways, the lady that he was in love with who ended up dying, I think that she's very, very important to the story, but I can't quite figure out how. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how the song that his dad sung differed from just saying their names on a regular basis because her his, I mean his dad and his mom said the names all the time and nothing happened it didn't happen until the song was sung so I'm a little like skeptical as to what that means but I still haven't figured it out I'd love to hear your theories on that okay so that was my I'm sure very rambly review for the name of the wind if you have any comments about any of the things I've said or if you want to give me some new theories or things that you really liked about the book etc etc literally anything comment in the descriptions down below and I'll make sure to comment back to you because I cannot wait to talk about this with some of you guys and other than that I will see you guys with another video happy reading bye